my workgroup which associated to my main access point using a lib to pa 2 But what I would like to use now is um, ipfast, that is to say open with lib. I was told it was more secure, so let's go for it. Um, so I'm, I'm going like to go back to my security setting on my access point and in the SSID set up open with lib along with network heap and see what it does. So if I go back to the SSID manager, check my SSID, and I would like to allow both open heap and network heap because I'm told that heap fast being more secure, the access point should naturally choose the more secure authentication mechanism. So I'm allowing both. Click apply, and of course I'm going to do exactly the same on the other access point. Open with heap and network heap and apply. Now if I go do a shut no shut on the workgroup which radio interface, let's see what happens. And look, it's still using a leap. Alright, so what's going on? It's not preferring the more secure. Well, the issue is that it comes from the legacy authentication method that we used before. So if I go back to my uh, SSID on my workgroup bridge, the way I send the password is that legacy method. And that legacy method only works with leap, that is to say, um, network heap here. If I want to use something more secure, I can keep my two options, network heap and open with heap, but I have to use an authentication mechanism which is more recent. So you have to go up a little bit in the same page, and there is this AP authentication uh, section here. And I have to use that way of authenticating my access point if I want to use the uh, more secure method. Uh, you can click this link here, or you can go on the upper left menu and go to the AP authentication menu, it's the same same thing. So before I do that, let me show you what happens when you use this legacy method. On the um, workgroup bridge, if I do a show run, you'll see that under the SSID, I'm defining authentication client username Cisco, password Cisco. That's the legacy method. If I use this new method, I'm going to use a credential name. I'm going to create, for example, Jerome. You don't really need to care about the anonymous ID and trust point. We don't use it in this scenario. So my credential name is Jerome, and I'm also going to go below and set up a method. I'm going to call it my method. And what is interesting here is I can define what method I want to use for authentication. I'm going to say I'm co I want to use ZipFast. You can press Control and select select several of them. And, you know, if you want to use several of them at the same time, you would start from the more secure and go down the list. Um, if um, if you were to use several of them, but I'm only allowing ZipFast here. So now I have one credential type and one method. If I go back to my SSID page, instead of using the legacy method, I can use this, this new method. Uh, as a side note, you cannot use both at the same time. You'll see I'm going to do it right, right here so you can see what happens. Um, so in the AP authentication, I'm going to select Jerome, and authentication profile is going to be my method. If I leave it this way and I leave the um, legacy method at the same time, uh, below here and try to click apply, uh, the AP is going to complain. Say, hey, hey, you cannot use the old and the new method at the same time. You have to use only one. Okay, so I'm going to use a new method. So I remove the old credentials and click apply. The second I do that, the access point is going to re-authenticate and is going to use this time the right authentication mechanism. So first, let me show you what it does in the configuration. It does two things. First, it defines these uh, .1x credentials and this e-profile. And then from the SSID, instead of uh, using the uh, username and password we had before, it just calls the credentials and the method. Okay, so if I go now to the radio, do a shut, no shut, nothing's gonna happen because the other access point tells me that authentication failed. So I also need maybe to add Jerome as a username and password on the radio side of things on the other side of, uh, of the network on the other access point. So let's do that real quick. I add Jerome, password Jerome, and off we go. The second I do that, the access point workgroup bridge will try to reset, and as you can see now, it's this time using ipfast lpa 2 So you see it's using ipfast instead of leap because I'm using this new authentication method. But there is last funny thing I'd like to show you on that series. If I'm using ipfast, why am I even offering leap? So I'll go back to my SSID and try to offer only open with heap. 
my SSID and I remove support for network heap, that is to say a leap. So I'll only allow open with heap, which is in that case only going to be heap fast because that's the only thing that this radio server accepts. Um, it doesn't accept PEEP or, or TLS, etc. Same thing on the other access point, just for symmetry and to show you that I'm not cheating anywhere. My SSID do only open with heap. Should work the same way, right? Well, no shut. And this time you see the message is quite confusing. It's going to say reset. And look at the authentication process. None. It's actually not using it fast at all. It's not using leap. It's using nothing. It's not using anything. It's an it's a canopy. It's an empty authentication. It's using the IPv2, right? But there is no secure authentication between them. So that's a key thing. If you want to use e fast, not only do you have to use this new authentication mechanism, but you also have to offer both network heap, which is leap, and open with heap. If you only offer open with heap, the access point is going to ignore the mechanism and is going to do no authentication. If you offer only uh, network with heap, you're going to do only leap. If you offer both, the access point is going to have its default, which is leap, but it also will have the possibility to override this default by using the more secure method you're calling, that is to say fast in my case, and being offered leap, it will re respond back that it wants to use something more secure and both access points will agree on using e fast. So in other words, offer both so that the access point can use the more secure. So this is for wireless link between two access points. Um, in the last video before summarizing all that, uh, we'll look at what it gives when you use a client instead of an access point, that is to say real clients to associate to the same SSID.